porky goodness at its best. Mm. Eating pork cato with crackle this good should be illegal. Mm. Look how moist that is. It is literally dripping with juice. Utter smut. In this video, I'm going to show you how to prep and cook a pork kettle in a Weber kettle. So just sit right back, grab a drink or two, and let's get into it. Don't forget, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. I love reading your messages. If you don't have a Weber, that's okay. Any cheap $90 kettle-shaped barbecue is going to cook this exactly the same way as a Weber. To make pork kettle, we're going to need some pork belly, like this 3.3 kilogram pork belly with the loin still attached that I picked up from Mick the Master Cuddler out at Gippsland Premium Meats. Now I suggest cuddling your local butcher today. Did you know butchers are people too and they love unsolicited cuddles from strangers. To prep this pork for pork cheddar we need to do a couple of things. Firstly, relax. I know some people get all worked up about pork and the crackle preparation. Have a drink. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, well, that's enough prep on the skin. Wait, what? Did I miss something? He just stared at that like he was in love with it or something. Now flip the pork over, it's time to add some flavor. We're just gonna slice open this loin muscle. This is just gonna give us more surface area to apply our seasoning. Now oil up this bad boy with some olive oil. Now go easy on the oil. We aren't running a Thai massage parlor. You mean a sensual massage. Now adding some crushed garlic and I add roughly one clove for every 10 centimeter square of the pork belly. And then I just brush this over just to spread it out a little bit. And now just adding the zest from one lemon. Time to add some salt, a few pinches will do. And then some coarsely ground black pepper. And it's up to you how much you use. If you like pepper, add a lot, but don't go overboard. And next up, we're adding some freshly chopped rosemary, sage, and thyme, and roughly about a tablespoon of each. You can add whatever fresh herbs you like. Did you notice I said herbs and not herbs? Because it has a H at the start of it, which is not silent. It's time to tie this up, and you'll be needing some butcher's twine for this. Zip ties and gaffer tape won't cut it. Now we're going to be cutting off lengths of twine and I tend to use the pork belly as a measurement. And I tend to add an extra half piece to each length that I cut. And I tend to cut enough lengths to put one every three to four centimetres across the belly. Now starting at the loin end, we're going to roll up this pork belly as tight as we can. And once it's rolled up, grab a piece of the butcher's twine we're going to start in the centre and we're going to tie this off. And we're just going to repeat this process until we've got it all tied up. Then just trim off all the excess twine, place it on a wire rack that's sitting on a tray, pat the skin dry and pop that in the fridge to air dry for 24 hours. Did you see that I didn't salt the skin? That's right. Just let it air dry. The porchetta has been in the fridge for 24 hours and that skin is a lot drier. So grab your rotisserie rod and add one of the prongs, sliding that in through the center of the porchetta, adding the other prong, and then center your meat on the rod using these two grooves. And that's it. Your meat is nearly ready for some hot action. Smart, I think. We still need to prep the skin, but not right now. Be patient. Today, I'm using a 57 centimeter Weber kettle and I'm pairing it up with two charcoal baskets and the rotisserie setup because I want to be cooking on a rotisserie at 240 degrees Celsius today. And how I'll do that is by overfilling a chimney starter with Gigi Lump Charcoal. I'll grab my charcoal baskets, I'll place them in the center of the charcoal grate and dump the fuel into them. And then just moving the charcoal baskets to the outer edges of that charcoal grate. Don't forget to add a drip pan. Carefully put the grill back in place. Oh, who called it? Nothing but net. And then remove it because I don't need it today. I'm using the rotisserie. Add the rotisserie ring. It's time to get the porchetta into the Weber. So we need to season it. Now you just want to lightly oil the skin. Hence why I transfer the oil to some paper towel. And that way I control exactly 
how much oil goes on there. Spinning around, make sure you oil all of it. And then just adding some kosher salt. And now just popping the rotisserie in place, push a button and make it spin. Pop the lid on, making sure all the vents are wide open and that lid vent is to one side of our rotisserie. And we'll check back on this in one hour. The oil helps the salt stick to the skin and the salt is just purely for flavor. Don't salt your skin until you're about to put your pork into the barbecue because salt draws out moisture and leaves it on the skin. And then you'll ruin all the hard work you've done by drawing it out in the fridge for 24 hours. We are an hour into this cook and we now need to lift the lid and check on the crackle. And what we're after is a nice hard glassy type of crackle that's gonna be super crunchy when you bite into it. Bang, exactly what I was after. Put the lid back on, we have formed that glassy hard crackle that we want, but the meat's not quite ready. It's only sitting at 45 degrees Celsius. Once your crackle is formed and you're happy with it, you wanna close down that bowl vent to about halfway, and this will drop that temp down to roughly 150 to 160 degrees Celsius to ride out the rest of the cook. We'll come back and check that meat's internal temp in about 30 minutes. Crackle is the key to pork cheddar because no one asked how the meat was. Although we still need to cook it properly and not dry it out because we want to keep it moist, smut. Today, I'm using a rotisserie setup. And all up, this pork kettle will take under two hours to be perfectly cooked. Or for those of you who love to use my beer timer, you're looking at a four beer cook. Cheers. The length of your cook will really depend on the size of your meat. I have no idea what that was, but I didn't like it. So I'm calling smack. It's time to check the internal temp of the pork with an instant read thermometer. Roast pork needs to be reading around 65 to 70 degrees Celsius to be ready. But pork belly has a lot more fat in it and it needs more time to render some of that down. So you can punish your meat and push it further to make it soft. And what we are aiming for is 74 degrees Celsius. See, I can be mature. I could have made a joke about waiting until your meat was soft, but I didn't, did I? We have finally hit the magic number of 74 degrees Celsius. So we can take the rotisserie out of the Weber. Now all that's left to do is take out the prongs and we're going to let this rest on a wire rack. Now how long should you let this rest? Those that follow me would know that I have a calculation for this. It is highly recommended that you allow every 100 grams of meat to rest for one minute. So this 3.3 kilogram pochetta needs 33 minutes of rest time. Oh, that's some crackly goodness right there. And once it's fully rested, you can start slicing it up and serve it immediately. When cooking pork with crackle on it, is the crackle really formed unless you do a knife drag across it? 